You're going to die alone. Nobody's going to want you. You're going to die alone. (laughs) Y'all really thought y'all ate that. Like, (laughs) y'all really thought, like, ooh, we're going to sock it to these women now. You're going to die alone. Like, do you understand that we come from divorced mothers and grandmothers and yeah tell us what's not normal about a woman dying surrounded by her children most women don't die alone it's actually most men who end up alone because they tend to be estranged uh from their children and siblings and there's pride and there's arguments disagreements i'm not talking to this person for 14 years like yeah that's not our bag baby uh, women aren't really, you know, it's funny because we're very clingy with our mom. Like we're, we're, we're in our thirties and we will still jump in the bed with our mom. Like mom scoot over. We got the nieces, nephews, grand so-and-sos in the bed with us. It's a king size bed, whatever. We'll get you a double king, a California king. A, it don't matter. My mom's always got a king bed and we're always in it. Okay. And she's like, oh my gosh, like she wants space. She wants vacations. Like, you should have saw my mom, okay, for her birthday. She was so happy. And all we did was, like, send her out of state, like, like a hotel with her friends. And they were in there, like, little middle school girls playing Yahtzee. Like, they were so forking cute. It was ridiculous. They didn't want to go out clubbing and getting drunk. They didn't want to put on high heels and pretend to be young. They were just like, ugh. We're away from everybody. They got to be what? Say it with me. Alone. Black women spend so much time of their life in service to other people that sometimes these moments of alone, and don't be an introverted black woman because then that's a whole nother layer, right? A whole nother layer of actually needing alone time just to re-energize. Now, if you want to threaten us, I can tell you what is a greater threat, but it's not dying alone. That That's not, I mean, if you mean alone as in without a husband, that's not really the biggest threat. The biggest threat is, first of all, I would say decrepitude, right? The the old age of decrepitude to the point where you're, you're boo-booing and peeing on yourself. You can't get to the bathroom. Everything hurts. You can't move can't take care of yourself and you're suffering that scares black women but you know what black women have jobs 501k retirement plans and if all else fails it's like you know hey a a state ordered you know caregiver right because a black woman will sit and watch golden girls all daggone day and you know we will we don't need to go outside and play millennial grandmothers will probably sit inside and snapchat their little you know walkers and wheelchairs and and do their little beyonce dances sitting down and and like it, they'll be okay it's literally the lives that we're living like right now you're telling us to be afraid of the lives that so many of us are living right now as in alone as in unmarried without a man you're telling us like we're like for some reason the life that we have now is going to scare the hell out of us when we're old when we have all this experience with it another thing we're afraid of dying broke or not dying broke like it can be one thing if it's like okay you know all my money left my hands before i went to the grave that's great but living in squalor and poverty as an old person is very very hard is very very hard that is scary like i said decrepitude and immobility and pooping on yourself colostomy bags whatever things that are not often associated with you know being elderly but could happen you know diapers and and uncontrollable bowels and vomiting and illnesses like that freaks us out but then there's yoga then there's personal trainer and then there's you know there's a Madonna who eats well enough and stretches well enough. I mean, she's she's a total grandma age, grandma age range. I don't mean, you know, 40 something year old grandma either, you know, people well, well into their 50s, right? A lot of the celebrities we grew up with are well into their 50s. 
and they're chilling. They're somewhere, you know, in a, in a downward dog, uh, sutra vasana, some kind of a pranayama, like doing mantras and mudras, like, like they're good. You know, because they didn't continue the culture of eating the wrong foods, fried and salty, whatever it is. I personally need salty food because I've got low blood pressure. That's another conversation. But I mean, just dying alone. It's like, it's like uh, you're going to threaten somebody with dying alone when they're living alone. There, there's nothing else to it. And for women, there's always, even if you don't have kids, right? Because I think that's the scarier thing for women, which we're facing down every day. But the scarier thing for women is to not have children. I think that that's the scarier thing. Um, something about children, something about seeing the work of your hands, something about because children are the love of a woman's life, oftentimes. The average woman loves her children more than she will ever know how to love a man. And that's why so many women are more willing to be single mothers than they are to be, you know, these spinsters like me who are just like, you know what? No wedding, no womb, no matter what you say, I'm not having a baby at a wedlock. Most of them are like, "Uh, you know, I really want to be a mom. That's what a lot of women are afraid of. They're afraid to not be a mom. But some of you, I mean, you're so reckless. I mean, you'll make a mom out of her. You know, you're, you're, you're reckless with where, where you, you know, put your seed. And she'll have a kid. And she'll be fine. You know, and these kids especially. And don't let a black woman have a daughter. Because, I mean, hear me out. Because some black women are just atrocious, like, when they have a daughter. But, like, women like my mom, like, psh, your daughter mess around and, and is your best friend. I love my niece so much. I love to hang out with my niece. And my niece is only three. But like that girl is funny. She's beautiful. I love to give her gifts. Like it's, it's just such a pure love. It's like she doesn't have to give me anything. There, need, there doesn't need to be any, any reciprocity, reciprocation. I just forking love her. I, 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 I go nuts. I, I see my mom in her face and her mannerisms, my sister, like, like things that only we are born with. And it's the most incredible thing to see. And I didn't need to have a kid to witness that. Now, of course, I did. You know, my son passed away. There's that. But women are more scared of my reality than the reality that you're threatening them with. Because I don't plan to have any more kids. Like, yes, I'm still fertile, extremely fertile. But I've got a Paragard IUD. Um, I'm always half dead when I um, am in labor, delivery, pregnant, miscarrying something. So I just kind of made that decision um, to use this kind of birth control. But women are more afraid to die like me than to die like what you're threatening them with. You're not going to threaten a single mother with loneliness. She's never going to be alone now me I have a man I have the high value man who is a decade older than me who whoop de whoop 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 but if something happens to me I'm truly alone because I've I've got zero plans to have any children So people are saying I'm the woman to be like because, oh, you know, she's not walking around here bald head with somebody else's kids. No, but if something happens to him, I'm truly alone. Whereas my sisters, the men in my sister's lives can come and go. They've got children who love them, children who will provide caregivers, children who have all kind of investments and trust funds and things in their name already. Life insurance, like, mm-mm. Lonely my ass. And on top of that, girlfriends. Women know how to keep friends. It's literally like, oh, you're going to dial. So you're going to be 50, 60, 70 something years old without somebody to put it in you, stick it in you, penetrate you, make love to you. Are are you even going to want it? Are you even going to want somebody sweating on top of your frail body for seven minutes? 10 minutes, half an hour. Good God, if it's longer than half an hour. Oh, my God. 
Oh my God. <laughs> it's one thing to take a break, but if it's like consistently half an hour, man, yikes. That's a lot. I mean, there's so many women, maybe when their hair is salt and pepper, they still need it. But by the time their hair has gone white, they don't need you and your, your big body. Like, no. For what? Their joy is in their grandchildren. Their joy is in, you know, gardening. Their joy is in peace. Because black women live with so much chaos. All they want is peace by the time they, you know, they hit that, you know, 40, 40 year threshold. Ooh, all they want is peace. They want to go shopping. They want a good drink and, and some good music. Maybe a, a social media app that they like and kids that are asleep. We love a sleeping baby. Something about the inhaling and the exhaling of a sleeping baby or toddler, you know, the heartbeat. It just, it just relaxes us. So again... You're threatening single mothers with what will never be their fate. They've got kids who love them on average. They're not dying alone. I mean, there's, there's going to be people at their funeral. There's going to be people at their home, all up and through their house, especially if they have a son or somebody who lives with them. Like, like dude. The last thing a woman who is you know, 60 years old, 70, 80 years old need it needs is a grown man to get yelled at by clean up after like, no, to be some slave for when her back is aching and her bra's too tight and her booty shaking from left to the right. Like, nah. So these threats, it's like, you're threatening us with the reality we already live. If, if, if you're threatening us to be without a man. And don't get it twisted because, like, you know, my mom, my grandmother, they both dated in, you know, their, fifth, their 50s. They both dated. They both had boyfriends. They both had companions. Like, you know, people, people experience love with their peers. That's true. And even if we don't do that because millennials are, you know, weird or something, that, that's okay, too. I mean, I think black women, more than being afraid to die like me, like I said, with my set of circumstances, we're afraid to die with an asshole, a straight jackass who ruins our lives, who makes like, you know what we're afraid of? Do y'all remember when uh, Miss Seely in the color purple, Mr. kept hiding all her letters from her sister and stealing all that joy from her? We're afraid of living with somebody like that. Who makes you miserable? Who puts you down? Who talks to you the way the you know what is fear talks to black women? That's what we're actually afraid of. Part of the nightmare of that movie was her growing old with Danny Glover's character, Mr., which was played so well. We don't like the real Danny Glover. Like like black women don't know how to look at the real Danny Glover and, and be normal because he did his role too well. <laughs> he played that role too well. Couldn't reinvent himself. We we couldn't get over it. Yeah, it's a lot of dudes who starred in Tyler Perry movies who unfortunately have the same fate. We don't even want to look at you. Think about that really quick. We literally don't even want to look at the actors who played these roles, these n- n- fictional characters. Because that is our actual fear. Marrying you, having kids with you, giving you our life, our loyalty, our love... Only for you to screw it up. A literal movie was made about it. Growing old with a man who will never honor you, who will never respect you, who will never repent, who will never tell the truth, who will never, who will always put you down, humiliate you. Your hair, your nose, your skin color, your sister, your friend, they look better than you, blah, blah, blah. I cheated on you. I beat you. I this like like that's the fear. It's a literal whole storyline about that. Does Shug Avery look sad? <laughs> she. I mean. I mean. 
who Whoopi Goldberg must have said something at the end of that movie, like, you know what? I may be black, and I may even be ugly. But as she was leaving that mister, she was like, you know what? But I'm here. I'm here. And she was free. And she was happy because she was free from this man who got his pleasure and his parasitic energy from her sadness and from making her sad. Y'all don't understand how sad some of y'all make us. So you can have that big throat, oh, you're going to die alone. But tell the truth, brother, that's your actual fear. That's the actual fear that a lot of these deadbeat dads are like, you know what? I got nine kids and don't know none of them. None of them are here. None of them are blah, 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 blah. Because you didn't take care of none of them. You didn't love none of them. Didn't raise none of them. It happens more to men than it does to women. Go to any nursing home or, or assisted living home. Daughters stay pulling up. Daughters and grandkids stay pulling up on those folks. This is a reality. I was a caregiver. I mean, these things are these these idle threats. Oh, and yeah, black women are and, and we have uh, most black women have a fear of the afterlife. So some of us, you know, are afraid to go to hell. Some of us live like we're convinced hell don't exist. But those of us that are God fearing, that's what's scary. It's not just dying without a husband. Do y'all realize we outlive y'all anyway, on average? So silly.